practice like this, f*** up. We f*** up. Welcome to the State of the State of Hockey podcast, featuring Justin Jelnick and Joe Hayford. Let's talk hockey. Welcome! This is episode number one of the State of the State of Hockey podcast on Tuesday the 17th of March, also known as 27 Days Until Patrick Waugh Gets Fired, or we have proof that Joe Sackick is indeed a moron. I am Justin Jelnick. Uh, I am the uh, voice, this is the voice behind the State of the State of Hockey blog, which is now back in business, thanks to our producer Andy Carlson. Um, encouraging me to do a podcast and uh with me is our co is my co-host uh joe hayford joe how are you today uh not too bad looking forward to uh to a game tomorrow yes another big one um they will be playing nashville tomorrow night um the wild uh went and beat nashville a couple weeks ago down in nashville becoming like the fourth team to do that this year but then uh, nashville seems like they can't win a game since then at home yeah, absolutely. It looks like uh, we're going into this game tomorrow. We're one, one, and one uh, against them this year. You know, three games we've kind of beat up Rennie pretty good. Even when even when they beat us, we uh, we beat them up pretty well. So I'm actually anticipating a, a very good showing by the Wild tomorrow. <laughs> Lots to be excited about this week. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the week that was. Um, starting with uh, Tuesday, uh, the Wild hosted a game against. Uh, uh, New Jersey, a game that you actually attended for yourself. Uh, what did you think? Uh, it was it was a great game. There was a lot of energy in the in the stadium there. Uh, top nineteen thousand again um, at the arena. Uh, right off to a, a great start with the the Vanek goal. Uh, Stuart well, it's killing you to say that, isn't it? it it's killing me a little <laughs> bit. Absolutely. You know my feelings on Vanek. Yes, and, and we can certainly get more into that, but uh, suffice to say, you're, you weren't a fan of the deal, and of course you would score two goals in a game you happened to attend. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I did like the fact that Stewart got on the board with his first goal, though. Yes, uh, yeah, he he had a really good, strong showing. I mean, he, he's doing what he was brought in to do, um, you know, throw the body around, get to the front of the net, and make make things happen. I mean, personally, I thought the second round pick was a bit of a high price, but uh, I'm certainly going to enjoy watching him while he's here. No doubt about that. You know, I, I actually agree with you. I did uh, I did think that the second round pick was was a little steep, um, but when I come back and look how um, Colorado played against us, uh, almost a little petrified um, having that guy in our lineup, that guy that's not not going to take any crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it really made the difference, and I think it protected some of our guys like Parisi. And, you know, Gramlin got a shot taken at him right away in the beginning of that game, and that's when McLeod and Stewart dropped gloves. And I think that just kind of set the tone. So, yeah, I, I, I do think it was unfortunate the Wild just absolutely laid an egg against Colorado in the game before, but um, it was it it was good to see what what Stewart can do. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, I watched that game at home, and it just that onslaught of offense you know you've just been seeing the wild outshoot most opponents throughout the year and just not get goals to fall and that that happened in the new jersey game and i'll and and it was good to see that you know they can hit the net once in a while you just wish it happened in more games yeah absolutely and it was uh through through no fault of schneider's either he he actually played a pretty solid game yes he did um, you know he, there was some just some good bounces that went our way I mean, and as good of a victory as it was, I mean, keep in mind, this is a New Jersey team that has given up. I mean, they were absolute sellers at the deadline, and, and they have no shot left. But you still need to win the games that you're supposed to win, and that, that was a big one. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. They're, they're definitely not the, the New, New Jersey Devils of, of last year and the year before with the superb defense. It is, it is true, and I'm sure Preezy's happy to be on, on, on our side of that tilt now. <laughs> Yeah, he had some interesting post-game comments about that eight-goal <laughs> showing. <laughs> that was something. <laughs> so then uh, they had a couple days off, and then they got to host Anaheim on Friday in the first of a two-and-two. Two. Um, unfortunately, I personally got to only see the third period of this game, and it looked like they made a great effort to tie it up, but uh, they just ran into a hot goaltender and, and couldn't, couldn't get, 
get a point out of that one, which would have been really nice against who could end up being the top team in, in the West. Yeah, and, and looking at that game, the, the biggest mistake made there, obviously, yes, there's definitely a hot goaltender, um, but you can't turn the puck over in front of your own net. It just doesn't work out for you, and that, that's where that we had the rookie mistake. Matt Dumba turned the puck over right in front of the net, and there was no mistake about it. It went top shelf, beat Dubnik. Yeah. It's unfortunate to see the, the, uh, Dumba still do that. I mean, I was very much in favor of him being sent down to Iowa early in the season when he did. I don't doubt his ability to shoot. I think he's, and now that he's starting to see some power play minutes, um, Dumb is really adding a new dimension to that, to the power play. But, I mean, the turnovers are, are the killer for him. I'm, but I'm glad he could stay up here as long as he can keep that stuff down. I think he's going to be a tremendous weapon. And dude's still very young. He's going to, I think he's going to develop into a star. I absolutely 100% agree with you. Um, even that short wind-up slap shot absolutely destroys people. Uh, we saw that against, actually, we saw that against Colorado, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> where he actually basically almost decapitated a guy. <laughs> um, yeah. And actually, Bruce yeah. tweeted out, um, Dubnik took one very similar in practice. I guess uh, he's been, you know, practicing against against Dubnik a fair bit, and and. That was kind of scary. That that one that it looked like it got in under the mask in the Colorado game, and and that would throw anybody. So, shades of Backstrom circa three years ago in the playoffs. Yeah, sure thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> but yeah, so so, that, so they dropped a the game against the Ducks and uh, two to two to one, and it, it would have been nice to get a point out of that. But uh, then they they go play uh, Saturday night, and I saw almost all that game. Unfortunately, it stepped away. For the uh, first two goals of the game, well, I guess the first one goal of the game because the uh, Parisi one ended up being waved off in the second period, and that was just such a borderline call to me. I mean, I've seen those allowed and I've seen those disallowed, and you just never know. It really depends on what ref you get and who's running the video that night. Uh, yeah, and even going back to the first goal, that was that was called off against the Blues. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know How if you guys followed that? me when I was on Twitter. Yes. But... I I mean, we almost identical call um, last year. Parisi had a high stick call that got called off. That was borderline. And, and um, then, yeah, obviously this is a little different. Doesn't even go on the net. But that was funny. Nobody realized that until the second review. I didn't realize that. You know, I mean that the high stick call looked different to me. And then all of a sudden we see, holy cow! It rolled the outside of the net. It never went in. Yeah, there you go, Dumba pointing at the puck in the back of the net. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was the weirdest thing, but they they got the call right, which is, you know, why I still like replay on goal reviews in, in NHL in general. But, yeah, that was just strange, and then I missed the St. Louis goal, and then I got back in time just to see the uh, to see the uh, Prezi goal waved off, and then, of course, Vanek just torches everybody and ties the game. Absolutely, and then... Uh... Was it 20 seconds after that, Tarasenko did the same thing Dumba did. You can't turn the puck over in front of your own net. Brodzak right. top-shelfed it. Yes, he did. So, Well, then in the uh, in the third period, um, I mean, the, the Wild really just had that great minute where they got the back-to-back -back goals, and that pretty much sealed the victory for them. I, I couldn't believe it as badly as the Wild had been outplayed in the first two periods. Uh, yeah, we definitely were outplayed in that game on the road. I wasn't surprised, actually expected that series to go the other way, <laughs> win win here against Anaheim and uh, a I loss <laughs> if not an overtime against St. Louis. That's how I had it pegged out. Obviously, it didn't work out that way. We still ended up with the same amount of points, so I'll take it. Uh, all in all, it was an excellent week for the Wild. It really was, actually. And, um, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I think the Corsi numbers ended up being like 83 to 37 or something in that game. I mean, St. Louis owned the whole thing, and... Um, if it weren't for Devin Dubnik, that wouldn't be a game. So, hey, he's 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 a guy on the ice and that makes things happen, and uh, you, yes. you can't discount how valuable that is. Especially here, we know we know what a goaltender can mean, <laughs> uh, or the opposite end of that, as we've seen. So, uh, per the wonderful Sports Club stats, which I love to follow, um, they don't even seem to have a Twitter account, but uh, if anybody knows it and they're hip to it, drop me a line. Um, but, yeah, uh, they have the Wild sitting at 87.4% to make the playoffs on 83 points right now uh, with, uh, I guess, about four weeks to go. Um, you know, I I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Have they seen our schedule? That's my question. Yes, uh, actually, we this is based on the weighted schedules of everybody that's left. So, 
we have a brutal schedule, and we cannot take a single game off. No, that is true. I mean, but... we only play two teams who are currently not in playoff contention, and one of those teams that is not in playoff contention is the LA Kings, which <laughs> will probably end up in playoff contention. I think they are going to snipe Winnipeg when all is said and done, actually. so. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, that's that's who we play. I mean, yes. we don't, the only quote-unquote easy team we have is the Maple Leafs that we play. Other than that, we've got, you know, top division opponents. Well, I definitely think Thursday's game against Washington is very winnable, too, at home. But Oh, I agree. I'm just, let's, let's yeah, not take it easy. It's not we, easy. We it's can't not afford easy. it. I, I hear you. But what's really working in their favor, though, is that um, the Pacific Division is may only send three teams unless L.A. gets in there. So they're actually a lot further ahead of the bubble because of the way the playoff uh the playoffs that have been structured since the uh, realignment. I do like the fact that if, if the playoffs started today, us being in that number one seed, we'd be in the West. Yes. Um, and we wouldn't have to face the Blackhawks potentially until the Western Conference Finals. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not so sure about the Blackhawks right now. It's the Blues that, that scare me and the most, and, and Anaheim is scary too. I mean, those are the two teams Minnesota hasn't done much against uh, except for Saturday's victory. Yeah, but if you look back in the history, uh, the Blackhawks really never scare anyone, except for obviously that strike shortened season when they like didn't <laughs> lose a game. That, that was it seemed like, but that was that was ridiculous. But that I mean, they, they never seem to scare anyone until they're just until cruising they're by people, you know, winning six games to two each series. So we'll see. But this doesn't look like the Chicago that that you know went went to the final recently and the, this year. But we'll see. I mean, they may turn on a playoff side and then. We'll we'll see what happens, I guess. So, yeah, I just I, as much as I dislike the Blackhawks, I never count them out. I have to respect them enough to do that. <laughs> well, uh, Joe, you want to do our three stars for the week? Come get some. Uh yeah, rocking three stars. Number one star. It's going to be Mr. Devin Dubnik, of course. Devin gonna... Dubnik, twenty-five and one since joining the Wild, with a one point six six goals against average and a nine thirty-nine save percentage. Crazy. Just ridiculous stats. There was a piece on Puck Daddy today about um, Dubnik and the Hamburglar, uh, um, the Hamilton guy, I think it is, up in Ottawa, and uh, talking about uh, if they're going to get extensions, and, and both of them, and both goalies are, are free agents this year, and both GMs have pretty much said they're going to wait till the end of the year to, to make a deal just to kind of, and the speculation being that you keep that as a carrot and hope they continue going. But, I mean, there's probably... Also, they mentioned, you know, there might even be a heart case for, for Dubnik because, I mean, it's pretty obvious to see he's what saved the season. Absolutely a heart case for, for Dubnik, but don't count him out of the Vesna. We still got no. games to play. No, and we're no. right behind Corey Price. I, I, I would agree. So, so, but yeah, and that's just insane how good Dubnik's been. So, um, who you got at number two? Number two star of the week is Zach Parisi, obviously, heart and soul of the team, um, the locker room leader. I uh, finished uh, finished the week out one goal, two assists. Obviously, he adds more to more to the game than than those his numbers will tell you. Uh, mm-hmm. We've all seen Parisi. We know what he he brings. That heart, soul, determination, that never quit attitude. Obviously, always going to be a, a front runner, no matter what his numbers are for the three stars of the week. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, my I love Parisi as much as my wife will allow. I I, I tell you, it's uh, I I love watching his hustle. I I love watching him be first in. I love watching him cause havoc in front of the net. Um, he doesn't score the prettiest goals, but it doesn't matter. His his effort is, is a thing of beauty, and I I could watch him all day. And I'm so and I hope you know young players look at his work ethic and look at how he does things because I mean he's a great example. I mean, that's obviously rubbing off on guys like Schroeder and Zucker. I mean, Zucker is basically a mirror image of Parisi's game. He's just got a little bit better hands than Parisi does. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm excited to see what Zucker has, and I don't think Zucker would be the player he is right now if it weren't for having Parisi on our team. Uh, you know, Schroeder is obviously, he's rec- resurrecting his career too. I personally believe he should be in the lineup. Um, I don't think he should be a healthy scratch sitting on the bench, but... Obviously, I don't make those decisions. I agree, but obviously the the, the forward uh, group got much more crowded with all the trades and, and acquisitions at the deadline. Yeah, it looks like we're uh, we're looking at Cook and possibly uh, yeah. Carter returning, so it's going to get more crowded. 
Yes, indeed. But these are these are these are good problems to have that you have these players to sh- choose from instead of having to choose from minor leaguers you hope catch lightning in a bottle. So, I mean, 100%. like Trader like Trader clearly has done this year, but you know, tr- the the, the Traders coming out of the AHL are, are definitely the exceptions, not the rule. So, definitely, definitely. Number three, I've got Mr. Chris Stewart wearing number forty-four for us now. Love for the uh, new guy. Absolutely, he's got two <laughs> goals. One of them I got the witness personally. Mm-hmm. Thing of beauty. Yes, it was. One assist and <laughs> ten penalty minutes. <laughs> Both of them were defending Granlin. Yes. Both times I, he dropped the gloves to defend Granlin. Absolutely I mean, love that. Defend our defender talent guys. I, I don't mean to keep harping on the Avs, but I do hate them so much. But I mean they just seem to have it in for, for Granlin. They think they can abuse him and, and they try to do that in the playoff series last year and they just want to keep taking shots at him. I think that's why, you know, even if it makes me sound like a Neanderthal, there is still a a role in, you know, having to answer the bell when you're taking cheap shots, you know. Absolutely, and I think that there was less liberties that would have been taken if we hadn't picked up Stewart. So, yes, as you said, a second-round pick is is kind of a steep price for Stewart, but when you think about it from this way, we could be without Granlin right now. (laughs) To, to, uh, to, yeah, oh, boy. Boy, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound bad at all, does it? I didn't really think of it that way. Um... But yeah, I would say at least to Fletcher's credit, he gave him the 2017 sec, and he wants to keep the second for this summer, because I guess it's supposed to be a pretty good draft. So, yeah, and we're getting a little thin on draft picks this year with all that the is, ones we've given up recently. That is so. That is true, and and you know, a topic we'll probably want to discuss this summer is it's starting to get pretty bare in Des Moines, um, especially on the blue line. They're going to need to backfill some help down there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of uh, free agent moves to pick something up for that. Um, Absolutely. You know, maybe, maybe sending you know a guy like Folan and Dumba even back down for another year of seasoning, mm-hmm. and, and keep our uh, our blue line stock with veterans up here. We'll um, see. I I really think Dumba's gonna stick. I mean, he he still makes the occasional gaffe, but it's definitely fewer and far between than at the start of the year. Oh, I absolutely agree. I, I, I 100% like the guy, and I'm all for him. But as we saw with Zucker, a little seasoning never hurt anyone. Yeah, I think the thing with Zucker, we were talking about this the other day, was um, when he was uh, in the first playoff run against uh, that that year, he, he uh, actually was on uh, Matt Cullen's line. And I think Matt Cullen was kind of covering for a lot of his uh, defensive deficiencies, which is is you know let Zucker thrive, but that's not a role that's gonna keep you in the lineup unless the team gets desperate. And they were desperate down the stretch after being decimated by injuries that year. Absolutely, and you know like like Zucker did back then, Dumba has some defensive deficiencies too. It just so happens he's actually playing a defensive position, <laughs> yes, and he might need to work on that next year. He he might, but I definitely think the twenty or so games he played in the A this year clearly helped him, and. And it's definitely a slower game in the A too, so that 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 kind of helps you adjust from, you know, as a middle step between juniors and and the NHL. Absolutely. So, what you want to roll into tomorrow's game? Yes. So they're playing these Nashville Predators, who used to be unbeatable at home, but uh, yeah, I I like their chances that they can play the same kind of game, go right to the net, keep it simple, you know, and they. Freaking Brodziak, you know, scores a goal right off a draw in that, in that game, and that was, that was some goal. But yeah, I, I think I like their chances to at least come away with a point against Nashville tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm pretty th- convinced, and I'll have to to get the numbers together for next the next week's show. But I'm pretty sure if Brodziak scores, we're like batting a thousand on wins. <laughs> and that guy just <laughs> that may be <laughs> just seems to when he scores, you know that we're having a good game. That that may be actually. Um, so. We've got, we've got three out of six points that we've taken from Nashville. Um, unfortunately, two of those three games were played here. Yeah, um, we did not put forth our best efforts in either one of those games. Obviously, and both those um, games one were of them Dubnik too. Both were pre Dubnik, and uh, one of them was during our really bad slide. We managed to pull a point out. Yeah. So it's not too bad. Like I said, Nashville, I don't think is going to be in our way at all. I think we match up very well against them. Um, I think they're a big team that doesn't play physical enough. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, if they played us more physical, I think it'd be a little bit different story. But uh, because they're such a big team and we're so fast, them not playing us physical really, really hinders their ability to uh, to get after us. Well, um, so I guess my vote is uh, I'm going to hope for at least a point tomorrow night. So. Oh, I'm going two points. You're going for two. All be, right. Being easy to. I, I, I'm definitely going to be the pessimist in this pairing, I think. So, but we'll see. Easy two, says Joe. Uh, Thursday night home against uh, Washington. What do we think? Uh, well, I'm thinking, again, we've we played them once. Got all two points we needed out of that game. Did not give up any. They did um, look really good in that game. And Washington's a tough place to win as well, even though the, the Wild don't go there that often. So. It's just a tough place to win, and you got to remember they were Alex Ovechkinless. That 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 is true. So, and they had like four power plays that I can remember. If they <laughs> do that again, we're in big trouble because <laughs> yeah. Ovi will be in the lineup. <laughs> yes, but I think Minnesota's going to be able to lock it down at home. So um, I, I'm I'm going to go two on this one. Yeah, I'll, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just if we see that penalty, if we see the the lack of discipline come out. Um, like we did last game, I, I just don't see us pulling that one out. But I definitely expect Yo to cover that in pregame, and I don't think that'll be a problem either. <laughs> so uh, Saturday, the Wild have a matinee because uh, college hockey tournaments in town that weekend. So they play at one in the afternoon against St. Louis, uh, just a week after the uh, last game against St. Louis. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, this is the one I'm actually worried about. Um, I think that we are, like you, like I said, we're going to do pretty well against uh, National and Washington, and I think we might get a little inflated. Um, <laughs> plus, I do think St. Louis is going to have a little bit to prove. Um, we took them down in their home ice. Mm-hmm. Um, we got three out of a possible four points so far from them this year. Uh, 1-0-1. I, I, I think that's going to be a very tough game, just like Colorado was a tough game um, for the last game of the season there, or the last game against them for the season. Um, I just don't think this is a game we can take lightly. And like I just said, I think we're going to be coming flying high into that game. I, I think I, it might I, give us more trouble than we're, we're expecting. Yeah. The one thing I will say is there's no way they're going to, the Wild are going to play as badly as they did on Saturday on, on a full day's rest. So um, I, I don't think they're going to get out Corsi as bad, badly as they did last, last Saturday. So I think that, that should at least help them stay in it, even though they're going to be an underdog clearly on Saturday. But um, I like their chances to come away with at least one, and, and they've got a decent shot at getting two out of that one as well. I agree. I definitely don't think it's unwinnable. I just I think that one, if we're going to worry about a game this week, that would be the game I'd be worrying about, especially because now they are in sole possession of that uh, top spot in the West. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then uh, let's just mention Monday's game next week, too, uh, uh, home against uh, Toronto. What are your thoughts on that one? Uh, home against Toronto. I haven't really. I want to make really sure I give much thought of that. Right. that. Um, yeah, you do have that right. That was the Maple Leafs game I was talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess. Mean, I mean, it's Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> it's they can much. either they can either be on, or you know, we can have blue jerseys all over the ice. Oh, and I I stand corrected. That's actually going to be a road game at Toronto. So right, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, forgot, I actually went to the home game against Toronto. Um, this was also in the pre dubnik era. And uh, Minnesota matched up very well against them, even against a good lineup. Um, you know, they, they, they were able to get to the net in that game, and they were able to get open and get guys there, and they locked it down hard. So I, I think this is a winnable road game for sure. I'll, I'll go between one and two points on that one just to be a little weasel. I'll go the full two on this one, and I, I'm thinking blue jerseys all over the ice. Blue jerseys. <laughs> so I think I've got five to six out of their next four games is my total, and I think you're probably around seven to eight because you're ever the optimist. Uh, yeah, seven to eight. Um, obviously the wild card game being that St. Louis game, I just think uh, that's definitely one we have to watch out for, and we can't take it lightly. Obviously you wouldn't think we would, but coming flying high off of two wins, we, we just may do that. I've seen it before. Well, so I guess that will be your weekly preview for the next seven days, or eight days, I guess, because we are going to count the Toronto game. Um, so uh, I guess uh, you wanted me to ask you before the show, um, how do you feel about Clayton Stoner? Ah, that was definitely <laughs> something I wanted to, wanted to cover today. Uh, you know, So Clayton Stoner's comments um, 
back when he first moved over to, to Anaheim. His, the quote was, I don't like the way things were running in Minnesota. Well, if that wasn't a big enough douche move as it was, mm-hmm. um, I can respect that at least. That's his opinion. He backed off of it. <laughs> the <laughs> quote, he backed off of it. He said exactly the opposite thing. The quote was, I did like how things were run there. When you have a guy like Suter, you have to utilize him. He completely 180'd on his opinion, and that just, to me, he gives him the, the douchebag of the week award. And could not <laughs> believe he backed off of it. I mean, I at, see. Least, at least stand straight on your skates, man. Yeah, because I guess if you're going to do that 180, it's kind of like you're basically saying you're misquoted or whatever, and that wasn't what he was saying at all. Or he didn't want Chris Stewart to pound his head in, which happened anyway. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I I was glad Stoner decided to show up once he realized in in the playoff run last year for the Wild. Once he realized uh, he he was playing for a contract because Minnesota didn't have any interest because he was pretty much going through the motions right up until about March last year. So, so I mean, I, I was not too sorry that they parted ways with him, even though it did leave him a little thin on the blue line. But that seems to have worked itself out with uh, Dumba's uh, emergence. Absolutely, yeah, definitely uh, take take a Dumbo over a stoner any day of the week. I'd take a Dumbo over four stoners. Um, <laughs> yeah, which like I said, I, over, over I, stoner? That's the question. Uh, now you're getting into uh, tomato-tomato <laughs> territory. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the, the Wild seem to have gotten some bad news on, on Nate Prosser earlier today. Uh, um, I did not hear that. He's going to be out a few weeks, it sounds like. so. We might as well just start five defensemen. I mean, yeah. I mean, with I mean, the pounding Prosser takes, you can't be that surprised sooner or later. He's he's gonna miss time. I mean, he 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 gets out muscled so often. Yeah, he do, and he does put himself in a bad situation. I mean, obviously, guys like Spurgeon and Brodeen, smaller defensemen, they obviously set a better standard for for smaller defensemen. They they play smarter uh, rather than harder. And Prosser likes to be Napoleon. He likes to <laughs> to be the the big guy when he's not that big. So. Obviously, yeah, like you said, you're going to pay the price for that after a while. <laughs> Indeed. So uh, hope, hopefully it's a good recovery. I mean, the good news is that um, Carter apparently skated today, and Scandell has been skating. So uh, I guess we'll wait and see if, if either are a go tomorrow. I'm, both, both players would be very helpful, obviously. From what I heard from Mike, yo, Scandell is almost – I would venture to say he's probably a go for tomorrow just based on – Previous press conferences with Yo and, and seeing how he treats uh, a player that he knows is going to play as opposed to the way he treats a player mm-hmm. that he doesn't think is going to play. So I, I would venture to guess that we're going to see San- Scandella. I wouldn't think we'll see Carter until probably around the time we play New York, maybe in April. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think Carter, we don't really need him right now, and there's no reason to rush him back. True. Um, I mean, and he's I, definitely something we want to have come playoff time. Yes, but yeah, I can I can see what you mean with the other acquisitions uh, that he's he's not such an immediate need. But I, I do like Carter's game so much, though. I mean, that was a sneaky good acquisition this summer. When I mean, how how are you a cap casualty in New Jersey with a salary that low, and New Jersey being a team that ended up this bad? Uh, you're not so much a cap casualty as you are a we just don't really like you, and we don't want you here. And, well, Parisi vouched for him, and, hey, I, I'll take it again. Praise I, Parisi. He's, he's at it again for us. I guess those weren't at least Lou Lamarillo's public remarks toward Carter at the time that he lost, that they lost him. But, but I mean, he, he, he and Lou Lamarillo were saying nice things about him, but who knows? He, you, you say things publicly that you don't believe privately all the time. It's, it's the gamesmanship in the uh, executive world. In the NHL. Absolutely. Try and justify your, your money decisions. Yeah, well, and Lou Lamarill's got, got an ego with all of them, no doubt about that. So. Absolutely. So. Anything else you want to cover? I think that's going to do it for episode one. So, um, everybody, enjoy the four games next week. Joe and I will try and live tweet as much as we can. Um, I am at SatsohockeyJJ, and Joe is at SatsohockeyJoe. So you can sure talk to us uh, during the games and let us know what you think of the podcast, what you'd like to hear or not hear. Um, but uh, I hope this will be your weekly dose of, of fun, fan-oriented wild talk. 
All right, everyone, have a good week. We'll see you later. Thank you so much, and thank you to our producer, Andy Carlson, for uh, bringing us on, and um, we will uh, see you guys next week. That's it? All right. Thanks for listening to the State of the State of the Hockey podcast. The music was created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.